Hi guys, it's Kelly and I am back again with another video. Today's video features some products from My Favorite Things. I showed you the snowflakes, which was actually my free gift, and I thought I was going to use them, but it turns out I didn't. And then there was another stamp set that I didn't show you that I ended up using. So ultimately I used the Cloud Stencil Polar Bear, Polar Bear Pals and uh, Cool Day from them. So uh, I wanted to do a scene card. I made this card a couple of weeks ago. Um, when I just had some time to kind of like sit and play with things I had already purchased but hadn't really gotten around to using. <laughs> um, and you know, scene cards make me happy. So I'm going to be doing some stamping and masking to create this scene. I kind of laid everything out so I could see what I would need to stamp first because that's how masking works. Um, whatever you want to be in the forefront, you stamp first and then mask it and then stamp whatever you want to be in the background. So that's what you see me applying here. My preferred um, masking for larger images is Eclipse Masking Tape. It comes in a big roll. Um, I do scene cards and masking quite a bit and mine lasts me months. Um, so just something to consider if you would like to get into some one layer cards. In the Cool Day set, there is this little, I think it's supposed to be like a glacier or some ice, um, but you know me, I like to get more out of my stamps. And so I turned it upside down so that I could use it to create a hole in the ice. As if it's like early morning, having their coffee, getting their breakfast um, kind of scene. And so I'm going to stamp that and then an additional bear uh, from the set, which is a little bit smaller. And so I put him in the background because objects that are closer to the front are larger. Um, so anybody who is smaller, if you have smaller size stamps, you would want to put those further into the background for your scene to make sense. So I'm sure you're asking why am I masking all of these things. This is me, my mask placement was not perfect and I had on dark nail polish so I was trying to get it up without streaking my nail polish right across my light colored card since it is a snow scene. Um, but if you have any of those smaller images you want to put them in the background. Why am I masking all of my images even though my stamping is done? It's because I'm going to do some distress inking to create my background. So here this is a larger piece of that Eclipse masking tape. And then for snow, I prefer shaded lilac. Um, you can go with maybe like a salty ocean. You could definitely go with a speckled egg. Uh, gray reminds me of dirty snow, so <laughs> I don't like to use that. Um, but the shaded lilac is a pretty kind of lavender color, this, you know, purplish blue, and I love using that for snow. And then if I need to do any shading um, for where, like, under my images or anything like that, I just use the BB family in my Copics. The other part of the card, which is the sky portion, um, I'm going to use that cloud stencil for my favorite things. And they have a couple of different ones that you can use for scene building, like they have grasses. Um, the cloud one is so cute. It's got different clouds on each of the sides. This is not a new product for them, but it is a new product for me. Um, and so I am going to be using the Salty Ocean to create my sky. I wanted to create a little bit of a border uh, in the background so that there was a little bit of blue. And then I'm going to put my stencil in place. This one, because it is so large, I didn't even tape it down. I didn't glue it down. I just held it with my left hand and did my ink blending with my right. And then I'm just going to turn it once, move it up a little bit, and then create the next layer of clouds. I'm going to be honest, I had a little bit of regret. Um, just because my scene seemed very one note um, with all the bluish hues. Um, and I kind of wish maybe I would have done like a you know, sunrise kind of feel to it, but I really wanted to use the clouds. So thankfully that is the benefit of owning stamps is I will own them forever and I can just, you know, make a similar card another time and do a sunrise or sunset or nighttime or, you know, whatever I'm feeling. This time we got clouds and I happen to think they're pretty cute. Um, just wish maybe I would have mixed up the colors a little bit. So we're going to get right into the coloring. Um, if you watch my videos, you know how this goes. Uh, lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest. I decided to do both of my bears as polar bears and color them white. With white, you're just adding in the shadows. Um, you're going to leave the majority of it white because if you want an object to appear white, <laughs> then um, you do have to leave some white in there. So I'm really just adding in some grays where I feel like the shadows would be. 
and don't worry if you feel like they look a little gray by the time we get done adding all the other colors in the card they will appear to be white so um if you watched my my last video you know that i was recently diagnosed with skin cancer and that i had a surgery um that was coming up um, my video was on monday today is friday so i have already had my surgery um, I just want to say before we get into the whole storytelling that um, I'm going to get emotional because that's what I do. <laughs> um, I was extraordinarily touched by all of the encouragement and prayers and loving comments that you guys left on that video. Um, I know oftentimes you guys leave comments and you say like, um, you know, you feel like we're, we're crafty friends and like we're having a conversation with each other. Um, and you know, even though you don't know me, I watch your videos and you know, things like that. Uh, I just want you to know, um, that I do read your comments and you have genuinely touched my heart and I am so very grateful. Um, just thank you so much. So, um, we got up. No, let's go back Monday night. Let's go back to Monday night. So Caitlin had come down with a cold on Saturday. She was kind of a little bit nose runny and a little bit coffee. Um, but she seemed to be doing fine. And for the most part, she was, you know, was a happy baby. She had been sick uh, in January. And when we had called the on call, um, you know, they basically told us as long as she's having, um, you know, she might not feel like eating as much, but as long as she's having consistent wet diapers, she isn't having any, you know, difficulty breathing that, you know, pretty much there isn't too much that you can do when they're this age. Um, and she was four months yesterday. So, which I need to take those pictures. I gotta take those pictures so I can get them posted. Um, so we really weren't doing too much of anything you know, outside of, um, we have a humidifier that you can put like the little VIX pads in. We had been running that every night. Um, on Monday night when I took my shower, I actually put her bathtub into the tub, like into the floor portion of the shower, um, with me so that she could be in there and kind of breathe in the steam to try to break up some of her congestion. But really over the counter, there isn't anything that you can give like they're too little for cold medicine or anything like that. So um, Monday night, that did seem to work well to kind of break up her cough. And you know, they just sound so pitiful. It's like the saddest thing to hear them when they're sick because they can't tell you what's wrong and they just don't feel well. And there isn't anything that you can you know, give them, they just kind of got to ride it out and they don't really understand what's happening and it just breaks your heart. So Monday night, um, even though I had got the anti-anxiety medication from the doctor and she gave me three pills, which was more than enough to get through my surgery, um, I probably would have considered taking one on Monday night because um, I was so anxious except that I was terrified that I wouldn't hear Caitlin um, because one of the side effects can be like being a little bit drowsy or being a little bit sleepy. Um, and so I did not take the anti-anxiety medication uh, on Monday night before my surgery because I was just worried that I wouldn't hear her if she was having trouble breathing or, you know, if maybe she was, you know, choking on like the... Um, the congestion that she had and so I was very worried about that so needless to say Monday night I could not sleep and um I was just I was up I think I finally got into bed at like 5 a.m um and my surgery was scheduled at 10 30 we had to get up by 7 30 in order to get everybody ready for where they needed to go while I was going to be in surgery Nathan to school and um Caitlin to, um, you know, where she was going to be watched at. And so I did not get a lot of sleep. I did not get a lot of sleep, um, which I'm, it really wasn't, I don't know. I guess when you're super anxious, like you don't even really, I didn't even feel tired. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I guess that's my point. So one of the other things, um, is that when I get super stressed out, like I typically have an upset stomach. It's something that I just like, I get 
from my mom and as I have gotten older and I am more anxious it has gotten worse so all of Monday night um upset tummy and not sleeping so I finally fall asleep like I said I got into bed at five I think I finally fell asleep around 5 30 and then got back up around seven ish I could not take the anti-anxiety med for my surgery until after I signed my paperwork so um Eric gets the kids where they need to go I um uh, get my, you know, stuff together. He comes back and gets me. And then we make our way to the surgery center, um, where they're going to perform my surgery. I get there and <laughs> the, I, I tell you this not because it's not horribly embarrassing. It is horribly embarrassing. Um, but because I believe that sometimes with these situations, like there has to be some, some, uh, some levity brought to the, the, the situation. Like we need to make it a, a little bit lighter because it is such a tough subject. Side note, back to the card. So I colored the side of the ice, the hole in the ice, the same as my snow. Um, but for the water underneath, I wanted to bring in kind of the same blues as was in the sky. And then I'm also going to use the same blue color for the, um, for the little sign and for the scarfs and hats um the little sign I believe was included in the set because you know you could definitely use it as like a north pole type Christmas thing but again I really think that when you spend money on a stamp set that you should be able to use it as many ways as possible so I thought it would be cute if like it was like the little name of their town um or like the little name of the ice fishing hole like something like that I thought that the sign could be repurposed and it would be cute so you tell me what you think if I if I sold that one to you or not um so anyway so we get to <laughs> we get to the surgery center we walk in the door and there's probably like I don't know 12 people in the waiting room it's a smaller waiting room and of course the restroom is right in the waiting room and like as soon as we walk in the door I'm like a beeline for the bathroom there I mean there was no there was no choice on my part and it was horrific and I hate public restrooms I hate using public bathrooms um but it just like it was what it was there was nothing I could do about it that was my situation um, so I come back out of the bathroom, um, I get checked in, I, this lady has me sign and I ask her, is that the paperwork I need to sign? Can I take this medication? And she was like, no, 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 the nurse is going to go over that with you. So fortunately, um, they came to get me shortly after she said Eric could come back with me. Um, and so they took us into the room. They took some pictures of the spot that was cancerous beforehand, um, you know, asked me some questions. The surgeon came in and talked to me. He was a super nice guy, kind of explained to me that there were other options besides the surgery. And then he goes, get this, you know, I'm sure they probably explained that to you when they spoke to you on the phone. And I was like, dude, nobody spoke to me on the phone until I called four days later because I found out through the patient portal. And he was pretty well, like he was appropriately horrified as was I, that that was how I found out. Um, so apparently I must have slipped through the, the cracks and that must not be the way they normally do it, which does make me feel better. But I'm glad I said something because like, let's double check that procedure so people don't find out that way. Okay, thanks. Um, and so like he did explain that there were, were some other options, but he felt like this was the best option. After listening to the options, I also felt like it was the best option, even though I was super anxious about it. Um, so surprisingly, they actually let Eric stay in there for my surgery. Um, he held my hand the whole time. Um, so that was a great source of comfort to me to kind of have him there. Um, so he sat with me, he held my hand and really like the entire surgery took maybe 15 minutes. Like, I mean, I know that's so crazy that it would only you know, take that amount of time. Um, but so it took 15 minutes. And then as I explained to you in the previous video, there's this waiting game, um, that they, between each layer that they have to take, um, to see if they have gotten all the cancer cells. And so during my surgery, you know, I, my surgeon's trying to make small talk with me and he's like, you know, what do you do for a living? And I was like, you know, you're probably not going to believe me. Um, but I actually am a, you know, 
police fire EMS dispatcher. And I said, um, I deal much better with other people's emergencies um, than my own. And he was like, well, that's pretty typical. Um, so we get done with the surgery. They kind of patch me up so that I can go sit in the waiting room while they, um, you know, check the tissue to see if there's any remaining cancer cells. And um, like I look up and my poor husband is just like white. Now, I got to tell you that he handled caitlin's emergency c-section like they walked him in the wrong door with my intestines laying on my body and was totally fine um so i'm like what is going on i'm like are you okay and he was like i watched the the needle part and i should not have watched the needle part like i should not have watched that because just like myself my husband also has a fear of needles um, so it wasn't the actual surgery that made him a little sick to his stomach. I think it was the, the, uh, local anesthetic. So back to the card. So here I wanted to do, Kathy Rakusen used to do this all the time and it's super cool. You have to be careful with how much alcohol you put on your, um, cloth. So this is just like an old piece of towel or washcloth. And I put a little bit of alcohol on it because obviously alcohol markers are um, react with alcohol. And then I squeezed out the majority of the alcohol so that it was just damp. And then I'm just kind of tamping that over his sweater so that it creates this sweater texture in his sweater that is super cool. Um, and then it will get more pronounced as it dries. But that's a fun little um, like technique that you can do if you're trying to get a fuzzy look and you're not really sure how to achieve it with your coloring. This is something that you can do after your coloring is finished to get that same look. Um, and so, like I said, just be careful with how much alcohol you put on that little pad because um, it can cause bleeding. Um, so make sure you squeeze it out good and that it's just barely damp when you're when you're doing it. Okay, back to the story. So we make our way, we, we are getting out and they're like, hey, there's the waiting room where all these people are waiting and that's where the television is or there's this other waiting room, which is a little bit more private. And Eric's like, go to that one. So we get into the waiting room. Um, he sits down. He's the poor guy. He's sweating. He's white. <laughs> and um, he like takes off his sweatshirt. I am digging through my purse. Now my purse is like, the equivalent of a landfill. I'm not going to lie. I haven't cleaned it out in forever. It's where all receipts go to die. Um, but I know that I have, like, typically I have candy in there somewhere. And so I am pulling everything out of my purse, trying to find something that will make him feel a little bit better. Um, so I find a piece of gum. I shove that in his face. And then I keep looking and then find one of the, like, the starburst church mints. You know, your mom always used to give you when you were little to quiet you down in church um and so I finally find one of those and then I shove that in his mouth and he's like I already have gum like I can't keep the two separate and I was like just eat it um and so we're sitting there and we're waiting it took about an hour and a half um for them to come back with the results but thankfully um thank god they were able to get it all they were able to get it all in the first try um, so I'm extraordinarily grateful for that. Um, and so then I have to go back in and, um, have them do the sutures. So Eric waited in the waiting room for that one, <laughs> um, which they didn't even give him the option to come in. I'm sure he would have come with me if given the option, because even though he wasn't feeling a hundred percent, um, after watching the needle portion, um, I'm sure he still would have done that for me, but it, it was okay. Uh, so I went back in and very interestingly, he hands me a mirror. Now, I don't want to look. I'm going to be honest um, because it's on my face. It's so close directly underneath, like on top of my cheekbone. It's right underneath my eye. Um, I was very apprehensive about what that was going to look like. And I concentrate on the most important part that they got it all, but I'm not going to pretend like it's easy. Um, and I know that some people, um, you know, are going to be like, who cares? It doesn't matter. Um, and ultimately it doesn't, but it does to me and it's hard for me to look at it. Uh, I'm not gonna try to, you know, put on a brave face and, and try to pretend like it's not something that bothers me because it does. So, um, 
ultimately he hands me the mirror so that he can show me how he's going to do the sutures to explain to me why he is doing it that way. Which I appreciate him explaining it to me. Uh, it was just really hard for me to see it. So the hole, there's no other way to describe it, that they that is in my face is about the size of a nickel. And so it's a, a fairly large spot. Um, he explained to me how he was going to um, sew it up. And with all of the stitches that I have, it's about three inches um, from the, it actually goes, like, you know, like the bags you have in your, under your eyes. Um, it goes into that section of my eye all the way, down, like three inches down my cheek at a, what is this, like west to southeast angle on my on my right cheek and um it's it's pretty large so he sews it up then he shows it to me which is worse than the hole because the stitch you know it looks red and angry and it's puffy and um so they bandage me up they tell me to leave my bandage on for um the overnight and then tomorrow morning to remove it um, the first time I clean it, you, you do a, um, like hydrogen peroxide on a Q-tip to just kind of clean it up and then slather the whole thing with either Vaseline or Aquaphor, um, and then rebandaged it up. And that is currently what I'm doing. And I am doing that until I go Tuesday to have the stitches removed. So he did explain to me that, um, wait, we have to go back to the card. So here is where I pulled out my uh, Polar Pals because I felt like the scene was looking a little bit plain. I felt like it needed some more color. I always feel like it needs more color. I love color. And so I got this little bucket of fish out. And then in the cool day set, they have... No, that's not true. Was it in the cool day set? It might have been from the one with the deer. Maybe I forgot about the one with the deer. Did I use the one with the deer? Can't remember. Gonna have to look. If I did, I'll link it below. Um... But so I use these little trees to kind of create this little ridge line in the background um, just to make it more interesting. And um, I think it worked. It, it added little pops of color, which is what I wanted. And so I just, you know, stamped a couple of, of trees um, over there and then my little fish bucket. My little fish bucket made sense with my little scene and I'm good with it. So anyway, he explained to me that right now everything is kind of very lumpy and bumpy and um you know it's going to be puffy and irritated I probably have a black eye um which I do have quite a bit of bruising and swelling underneath my eye uh it seems to be a little bit better today now that we're three days out um but the reason that they do it that way is he told me he was like if I don't do it that way now when it heals it will be concave you will be able to see where that tissue is missing in your cheek. Um, he said, but if I do it this way, where it's kind of puffy and bumped up now, when it completely heals, it will lay flat. Um, so, you know, it's got to get worse before it gets better kind of situation. Um, so three months is what we're looking at for everything to be kind of completely healed and lay flat. Um, that's a long time. But obviously, I'm grateful that now I have the time. Um, and so I'm just trying to concentrate on that part of it. And ultimately, you know, the scar will be what it will be and it'll take care of itself. And worst case scenario, if I'm that self-conscious about it, I'll just wear makeup. Like, there are far worse things that could have come out of this. Um, and so I just try to remind myself of that. So... Um, when I came home that evening, obviously exhausted, I didn't sleep the night before, um, was anxious for multiple days, and um, I gotta tell you, the anti-anxiety med um, did not even kick in until after my surgery was over. Like, they told me to take it after I took my paperwork, but because my surgery was so short, um, it didn't even really have time to work for what I needed it to work for. Now, it did work after that. It, it did. Um, 
So, like, I came home, pretty much just got directly into bed because I was exhausted. And then we had just a crazy night from there, which is a story for another video. Um, but ultimately, everything went best case scenario. Uh, and I am extremely, extremely grateful for that. I'm just trying to be very real with you um, about my feelings on it. The first day of changing my bandage was really, really hard. Um, and then like the second day, you clean it by just washing it with mild soap. And then, you know, doing the same thing, the Vaseline or the Aquaphor, rebandaging it. Um, and I like all I could think was like, I have to touch it. I have to touch it. <laughs> so now on day three, I am a little bit more comfortable. It is still hard for me, but... Um, I'm, I'm working my way through it. I did manage, which this is some silver lining, I did manage to find a way to bandage it so that my tape and bandage was not poking me directly in my eyeball every time that I looked down because that was a problem for the first um, day and a half. Like because of the swelling and how close it is to my eye, like every time I looked down, the bandage or the tape was like poking me in the bottom of my eye. So now I've just learned when I cut the tape and when I cut the bandage, I round it off. Um, so that way it isn't coming up quite as high and isn't poking me with the sharp corners. So um, you saw me use the uh, glitter pen on the water and the fish. And then I added some uh, stickles to my snow on my trees. And ultimately, I'm pretty happy with the way that it came out. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you learned a little something that you would like to try. And I will catch you on the next video. Bye.